Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Mount Hermon Missionary Baptist Church, located at 2283 Sunbury Road, Columbus, Ohio. Bishop Donald J. Washington is our senior pastor. Today, he'll be covering 2 Kings chapter 6, verse 1 through 7, in how to recover your edge. Also, on the 23rd of May, we would ask that you join us with Dr. White and other doctors in our parking lot who will be providing COVID-19 testing from the time of 10 to 2. We hope to see you there. Good morning. God bless. Amen. Good morning, everyone. Today's scripture will be read from 2 Kings chapter 6, verse 1 through 7. And the sons of the prophets said unto Elijah, Behold, now... The place where we dwell with thee is too straight for us. Let us go, we pray thee, unto Jordan. And take hence every man a beam, and let us make us a place there where we may dwell. And he answered, Go ye. And one said, Be content, I pray thee go with thy servants. And he answered, I will go. So he went with them. And when they came to Jordan, they cut down wood. But as one was felling a beam, the axe head fell into the water, and he cried. And he said, Alas, master, for it was borrowed. And the man of God said, Where fell it? And he shewed him the place, and he cut down a stick and cast it into thither. And the iron did swim, and therefore he said, Take it up to thee. And he put out his hand and took it up. Bless the word. Praise the Lord, everybody. Come on, praise the Lord, everybody. You can, wherever you're at, you can stand if you want to. uh, Meditate. Just make sure your heart's focused on God. Now let us prepare to go to the throne of grace. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we come again to your throne saying thank you, Father. Thank you for waking us up this morning, and thank you for watching over us last night. Lord, sometimes we take for granted the things that you do for us and the things that you give to us, but God, we want to take this moment now to acknowledge your power and your glory and the favor that you've put over our lives right now, God. Thank you for doing what we didn't deserve, God. You you sacrificed your only son to to watch over and protect and save us, Lord. Thank you for what you did on Calvary, Lord. Thank you because everything that you did for us, Lord, is the reason why we can get up day after day and continue to do your will because you have already laid out a path for us. So right now, Lord, we say thank you for being a hedge of protection around us. Right now, Lord, there are families that are in need right now, Lord. I'm not sure what they're in need of. It could be food. It it could be healing. It could be shelter. It could be love. But Lord, I know that you have all of those things and you're a provider of all of those things. Lord, you are a provider to the homeless. You're a provider to the weary. You are provided to those that need food and need clothes, and you will do it. So I thank you right now, God, because you're already making ways out of no way. And I thank you, God, for what you've done in my life, oh, Lord. Thank you for picking me up, Lord, when I felt like I was falling down. Thank you for lifting me up and telling me I can go on. Thank you for giving me the strength, Lord, even when I was weak, because your strength was made perfect in my weakness. So right now, I just say thank you, Lord. And I'm asking that you just cover every family out there right now. Cover every mother that's hurting silently right now, Lord. Cover every father that is weary and tired right now, Lord. Cover every son right now that is confused in this time of need. Lord, cover every daughter, Lord, that doesn't know what going to happen, but God, I know what's going to happen because you rose with all power in your hand already. You already won the victory, Lord. So all I have to do is plead the blood over these things, Lord. No devil can come in this place right now, Lord, because I plead the blood right now. I plead the blood of Jesus over every person's mind right now, Lord. I plead the blood of Jesus over every person's body right now, Lord. I plead the blood of Jesus over headaches right now, Lord. I plead the blood of Jesus over pneumonia right now, Lord. I plead the blood of 
Jesus over asthma right now, right now, Lord. I plead the blood of Jesus over any liver disease right now, Lord. I plead the blood of Jesus over any heart disease right now, Lord. And I know that you're a way maker and you will take their blood and transfuse it with your blood, Lord. And the blood of Jesus will make us whole. And the blood of Jesus will make us right. And so, God, I thank you right now for being our doctor when we were sick. Thank you, Lord, for being our lawyer when we were in the courtroom. Thank you, Lord, for being our provider and our shelter from the rain. And God, I give you praise right now. No matter what's going on, no matter the pain in our heart, Lord, we know that you're a healer, God. No matter the pain that's in our bodies right now, we know that you're a deliverer, Lord. No matter the pain that's in our minds right now, we know that you're a redeemer, God. So we say hallelujah right now, Father. Praise your holy name. Bless your holy name, Lord. We give you the praise. We give you the glory, and we give you the honor. It's in the mighty name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Yeah! 
Again, praise the Lord to everybody. We are so thankful for being here on this third Sunday. We pray that your week has been prosperous and productive as well as, as praiseworthy week. And we praise God for another day, journey that, uh, and a day that we've never seen before. We thank God for all that he's done. Again, we want to thank him for allowing us to be here on this Sunday morning. And the death angel continues to pass us by. Coronavirus hasn't touched us, and we are thanking God because I believe we are covered in his blood. Thank God for the blood. Thank Trina and DJ, as always, for their ministry. And these two dynamic preachers, Minister Boston and Minister Jordan, these are some of the most prolific young men that we have. And I don't want to brag on my son, but he has all of my talents particularly uh, the singing part and the preaching. I thank God for them because they have really been an integral part of what we're doing over these couple of months since we've been under these restraints. But certainly we hope that um, what we've done, we don't take it for granted when you're taking the time out of your very busy schedule on a Sunday morning to watch pitiful me and how the Lord has blessed us. I thank God again. Now, this coming Saturday on the 23rd, I will remind you, and I want you to kind of look at your uh, Facebook page. There's some announcements coming up that we're going to have a COVID-19 screening here at the church on Saturday, uh, May the 23rd from 10 a.m. until 2. The only thing that you need to bring is your insurance card and a valid ID because in our community, there's a lot of people that haven't been tested. So put that on your calendar this coming Saturday, May the 23rd from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. here at Mount Hermon Baptist Church. And we're going to make sure that you get tested. Thank God for that. If you have your Bible, we want to thank uh, Minister Boston for reading that text so beautifully, 2 Kings chapter 6, verse 1 through 7. And I'm going to pinpoint that today because I think that uh, this is a great text for us to learn a little bit about ourselves. Just let me read the first verse, first couple of verses, and I will move on with what I want to say. It says, And the sons of the prophets said unto Elisha, Look now, that's what behold means, the place where we dwell with thee is too straight for us. Let us go, we pray thee, unto Jordan. And take thence every man and beast, and let us make a place there. I want to talk about, if you will, I got my edge back. I got my edge back. I just want to start off by saying this is a wonderful text because it's really a reflection of the prophet Elisha. This is the man that received a double portion of his mentor, Elijah, before he went up to be with the Lord. Uh, we thank this teacher. He was a teacher to these young students. My brothers and sisters, he was the teacher of young preachers. It was the school of the prophets. And what happened, they had so many that they had not enough room. They had a little collaboration. They had a little conversation. Say, hey, look, uh, Elisha, this place, because it says it is too straight for us. It's too straight, which means it's too small. We have built up so fast, and we have so many that are around us that it has compromised our comfort. This is a school of the prophets. They had a conversation, but once they had the conversation, they wanted to collaborate and go and find another place at Jordan that they would have room. So when they had the convocation, convocation, if you will, with uh, Elijah, they wanted him to go with them. They didn't want to go without him. And as a result of that, when they get there, since they had the conversation, they had a collaboration, then they want to have some construction. So what they did, they went out and they began to chop down trees, cedar, and, and different types of trees to build this place for their dwelling. 
And while they was in the process of doing that, all this ministry, they had collaborated, they had conversations, they had engaged in construction. And all of a sudden, while in the midst of serving in ministry and advancements and, and making room for growth with other like-minded men in the ministry, something happened. He lost something that was essential while they was cutting and swinging their blades and swinging their axes. Something happened. The blade portion of the axe fell off and left his efforts futile. What a tragedy to be building and have not an axe. Right. While serving in ministry over 30 some odd years, preaching for 43 years and pastoring almost 39, while serving during this time, sometimes I feel like I've lost my edge. Teach pastor. By fooling around with, with the paralysis of analysis and, and debating over trivial issues that proved to be minor issue at best over these 39 years. And these kinds of things can sometimes cause you to lose your, your cutting edge and fly off the handle. Right, right. Getting engaged in nonsensical things in the church kind of make you just go off and that your preaching and your teaching, you kind of lose your edge, the edge, the part of you that make you efficient, the edge that the part of you where you find dr your drive and your discipline. The edge, the edge where your goal and your gumption is. Have, do I have a witness in here? Your, your, your edge, your edge where your energy and enthusiasm is. The edge. And if we're not careful, we will be swinging our axe without a blade. When, when, when you lose it, it takes away from you that part of you when you used to do purposefully. The, the part of you that you used to be productive, the part of you that you used to do passionately, and when you used to drive yourself to do stuff, now it drains you because it seems like you've lost your edge. I wish I had a praying church here. What used to excite you, now it exhausts you. Do I have a witness in here? John, I know how enthusiastic, enthusiastic you are with your ministry, but sometimes when you put your best efforts in, it just seems like you're just swinging with a bladeless axe. I wish I had a praying church where there was courage and vitality. Now there's complacency and vagueness. I, 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 have to, I have to applaud the young men, Jamal. I have to applaud the young man, at least uh, because he did something that all of us should do. When he found out that he did not have a blade, he stopped swinging. Right. Y'all ain't going to help wow. me preach this thing. When you lost that part for which you need to be effective, the young man, he had sense enough to stop swinging. Right. Often we, we, we keep swinging when we lost our blade, my brothers and sisters, because we find out when, when you lose your blade, we show up early to teach with no blade. There's no sharpness in your teaching. We, we, without a blade, you, you can't preach like you're supposed to. We, we talk long without a blade. We sing long without a blade. And we say, come on and get with me. There's no blade. There's no sharpness in what you're doing. We pray without a blade. Stop means we have to accept internally that what you are doing externally is no longer working. Stop already. Why do you want to try to give God praise and you don't have no praise in you? We hold people hostage when we have nothing effective or productive to offer. And when we don't have anything to offer, we are productiveless and we're not giving that which we should be giving. Sometimes in the subculture of the church, it is the norm 
It's the norm to pretend rather than to admit that you're blameless. It's better to admit a struggle than to pretend perfection. Preach, Reverend. Preach, Reverend. Admit it begins recovery. When we admit that there's something wrong, that's the part of recovery. While pretense keep you in bondage, what we need to do today, as, as regular as we should do, regardless of what is going on in our life, it requires all of us, first of all, to confess to God that I need to reset my spiritual life. Just that plain and simple. I need to stop swinging with a bladeless act. Stop and review. Stop and reevaluate. Stop swinging and reflect. Stop swinging and repair. He had the same. He had the sense to stop swinging his blade. Do I have a witness? Yes, sir. Not only did he do that, but he had the sense to to seek help, because the Bible says in verse five that he says, um, and he cried out and said, "At last, master, for it was borrowed." In other words, these are students. They didn't have any money, and this blade was borrowed. It wasn't his. And during that time, iron was uh, very expensive. And to borrow that to build, and then he doesn't have a blade, and while he's swinging, somehow or another the blade flies off, and Elisha said, well, where did it fall? Your Bible said, where did it fit? And he showed him the spot. And when I looked at that text, he says, now, he has sense enough to stop, but I noticed something. He said, I had a sense to, to ask for help. He said, where did it fall? He needed help. He wasn't arrogant. That's right. He needed help. Everybody needs some help. That's right. That's right. He asked him, where did it fall? He needed help. He wasn't arrogant about it. Everybody needs help. Don't go around here looking like, that you, you have arrived yeah, yeah, yeah. While, while all of us are still on this journey because it's always da it's a dangerous thing, my brothers and sisters, to be impressed with your own press. It, it's, it's a dangerous thing to pat yourself on the back. It, it's a dangerous thing to give yourself an A when you know you're flunking. Oh, preach, Reverend. Don't roll your eyes at me. He had it not been for the Lord on our side, what would we be? The question is, and I thought about this, Tamal, I thought about this, Reverend Jordan, because the question is, when did you lose it? Talk back to me if you can. When did you lose it? I'm talking about your blade. That thing that you used to do with ease. That thing that you didn't even have to question yourself. When did you lose it? Not necessarily when and not necessarily where, but what person upset you that you don't have a blade anymore? Ooh. Please, Reverend. Yeah. What, what, what meeting did you go into that everybody got quiet when you walked in? Yeah. You must have had a blade or something. Yeah. Or who said something about you that caused you to lose your edge? Who rejected you that now you don't feel like you have any part in the body of Christ? Right. He had sense enough to stop swinging, and he had sense enough to seek help. But number three, he had sense to reach for it. Now, notice what the prophet says. He said, now, where, stop, where did it fall? So what Elisha does, he takes a stick and throws it in the place where the blade fell. And notice the text, and I'm not making this stuff up. He said, now, you extend, you extend your hand and you reach for it. Uh-oh, wait a minute. Yeah. Yeah. In other words, you have to shift your body uh -huh. yeah. and you have to reach for it. He threw the stick. He knew where it was and he had to reach for it. Come on back to me now. Now, listen. Now, now watch this. The first moment that comes around was he, his, his confession. He cried. The second moment was his counsel, where it fell it. And the third was his capitulation. He said, he said, put your hand out and take it. Uh-oh. 
That means he had to participate in his own recovery. Sometimes we always want, us, want people to help us, but he said, you got to help yourself on this one. Yeah. Priest Reverend, yeah. he put out his hand. He had to participate in his own restoration. What a miracle. Because all through the word of God, you're going to find miracles. If, if Jesus was at a wedding he said, and, and they ran out of wine, he said, go get some water. Right. Right. And he looked at it. That's why we get blushed because well, I'm just saying. If, if, if you want to if you want to be cleansed of leprosy, you got to go and dip seven times. Yeah. If, if you if you want to feed five thousand, you got to find somebody with some barley loaves and a few little fishes. Yeah. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Those are miracles. And, and, and if you just find that boy with a few a little lunch and if you've got a Goliath in your life, all you have to do is find some smooth stones. Yeah. Uh -huh. You got the rich poet. Yeah. Right. I, I don't feel like I don't feel like yeah. preaching right. tonight. I don't, I don't, while, while, while I'm speaking, I, 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 I want you to know that your edge is coming back, all right, all right, yeah. but you got to reach for it. Uh -huh. yeah. I'm almost out of here. I, I done held you too long already because what distinguishes you and us from the world, you may not can copy somebody the way they walk, the way they sing and, and the way they talk and all of that. But, but they can't copy something that you have. Right, right. There's something that, that we have in the body of Christ that the world don't have. Right. We, we have the anointing. Yeah. Preach, Reverend. Preach. You and I are a part of the body of Christ, and we are more than conquerors on this earth. Right. We have an edge. Uh -huh. you, you, you don't need the anointing to get a degree. Right. You, you don't need the anointing to get a job. That's right. you, you don't need the anointing to be promoted on your job. Uh -huh. yeah. But we have an edge that the world don't have. Uh -huh. we, we have signs and wonders following us. Yeah. Because the Bible says, and these signs uh -huh. shall follow them that believe. I wish I had a... He said, you shall drink anything and it shall not kill you. We pick up serpents and they, sh and they shall not destroy you. I I'm talking about we have an edge. That's why your glory carries weight. Yes, sir. Yeah. The anointing breaks the yoke. Yeah. Matter of fact, the anointing destroys the yoke. Yeah. I wish I had a praying church in here. Yeah. You, you don't have to swing as hard when you have the anointing up on your life. Uh -huh. Earth and, and can, may reject you and Hell may reject you and, and want to accept you, but heaven will always recognize you because you got a cutting edge. I got to get out of here. I've held you too long. But when I think about how God has helped us and when I've gone through seen and unseen dangers, God has brought us from a mighty way. Have you ever felt like it was all over in your life? Have you felt like your anointing has gone? Just hang on in there and swing your axe. Yes, Have I got a witness in the house? The Lord has given you the anointing. Have I got a witness in the house? When I woke up this morning, I felt like that was all over. Have you ever been there? Have you felt like there's nothing that you can do anymore? When you feel like you're going to throw it in the towel, don't throw it in yet. Because if you hang around church long enough and you stay with Jesus long enough, he will make everything all right. Don't lose your cutting edge. What are you talking about? The Lord had us, given us the spirit. Hallelujah. That we can walk and talk in the name of Jesus. There are so many things that we can do because of the anointing. I don't care where you came from. I don't care how long you've been in the church, but the anointing breaks the yoke. That's your cutting edge. Well, just tell them they that you're not that holy. Just look them straight in the eye. And say, you don't know like I know what the Lord 
has done for me. He filled me with the Holy Ghost. I'm not what I ought to be, but I'm not what I used to be. Do I have a witness in here? Anybody out there, if you felt like you lost your cutting edge, just stand up and look your neighbor straight in the eye and tell them, I got it. I've got it. As long as I got Jesus, that's enough. He is a way maker. He's a way maker. He makes a way out of no way. I got my edge back. I feel pretty churchy right here. Anybody out there looking at me, you thought you lost it. But Jesus picked up the broken pieces in my life and made me a new vessel and reside my soul again. God bless you for my cutting edge. Thank you, dear God. I pray, God, that the Lord has blessed you today. You got to reach out and participate in your recovery. God will make everything all right. And Jesus is all right today. I want you to know as I open the door to church, uh, we ask you to think about where you are right now because literally the Lord has blessed you again. This is a week that you've never seen before. This is a Sunday morning. Matter of fact, it's a brand new Sunday. You've never seen it before. If you're not in church, I want you to give him a chance in your life. Even though you think that you don't have anything to offer. Jesus can pull you up out of the muck and the miry clay and set you on a new path. He will. He will give you brand new life. He will give you life, life, life abundantly. Oh, oh, come. Hallelujah. Oh, come. Will you come to Christ? To Christ. We offer Christ to you again. Come on now. We offer Christ to you. We offer Christ if you've been out of church, you, find a church oh of your choice. To give God your time, we and he will receive you. Yes, all of us have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Oh but what I love about the Lord, he can look beyond your faults and see your needs. He will. He, he will. will. Father, we thank you again for this day. We thank you for our rising up early this morning. You kept us all night while we slumbered and slept. We thank you, dear God, for all that you've done for us. Keep us is our prayer, and we will be mindful to always give you the praise. God, we love you. Thank you for being our all in all, in season and out of season in our life, you've been with us. We give you praise and honor. It is in the name of Jesus we do pray and ask it all. Amen.